man, the music that goes with that sounds like church music. <laughs> well, welcome to uh, From Domain to Profit. I'm Drew Wash, and we got a lot to talk about today. And I'm um, super excited to actually get to it because we got a lot of content. I've been stuck at home for the last uh, few weeks and uh, recovering from COVID and I'm super healthy. Thank you for all the, the wishes of uh, good health for me and uh, managed to have my brain, especially like this last week. So I've been able to fire off all kinds of ideas and things that I've been working on with my own business. And now I get to come to you here from home and try to communicate some of those ideas in a way that hopefully you can apply to your businesses. So, uh, and of course, I have some domains that I'm going to bring up to you today that I've looked and found this week. Uh, we won't have the bells and whistles and the fancy software and the moving cameras and all that stuff. Hopefully that's okay. Uh, we'll get all that stuff back next week, which I'm looking forward to because it's nice to have buttons to push. I like I like buttons. I like buttons. Okay. Well, say hi in the chat. Share this out if you would. It's time to get started with From Domain to Profit. From Domain to Profit, Domain to Profit, from a dot com to a business idea. Take a domain name, develop an income from Domain to Profit. We'll show you how. Domain to Profit, from Domain to Profit, join Drew Wash and get started right now. I dig the music. I dig the music. I got that on Fiverr. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that. Uh, when I started the show, I wanted it to be very much like um, Pat Flynn's show that he does every single day. He's been streaming every single day for like 300 days, all the way since March. Not, And uh, he's made it. He had a, a cool theme song music. And I was like, okay, let's go to Fiverr. Let's uh, come up with a, a little bit of a theme song and uh, so had that created, uh, can't remember who it was, but he did a pretty good job. I was pretty excited about it. So we have, a a, a, a pretty fun show. I have lots of content for you today. And, uh, well, first let me say hi to everybody that's here. Come on, Drew. Come on. You're not just stuck in a room in the lower level of your house trying to do a web show. You're actually here with, uh, people like Michael here. Michael, thank you so much. I think he, uh, if there's an award for the every week attending the show, pretty sure Michael would get it. And he was here, uh, even commented and said hi before the show even started. Boom, here's Chuck saying, uh, or Chaz, uh, let's make some money. I agree. Let's see if I can bring uh, bring home the uh, little, little good stuff for you. And then here we go, uh, Lee here. Uh, Lee, thanks for joining us all the way from the other side of the pond for uh, – from domain to profit. And yeah, I agree, Mike. I, I dig this stuff. Now, the stuff at the beginning, <laughs> like it said, like it's like church music is like getting ready for church. And what do we have here? Uh Brian's saying hi. And yes, I made it uh made it through the uh through through COVID. Luckily, I'm in good health. It was almost all the way through. It was a bit hit me like a bad cold. And uh luckily it didn't uh, spread too crazy through those in my life or anything like that. So that's all good, all good news. And uh, the only thing is, is I had to isolate. So I'm in my uh, home office, which I don't use very often. I, I'm i really fond of all the stuff I have at the at my actual office, which is you know five miles from here, especially the sit-stand desks. I got those, and I, I just love those things. I, I can't sit. It's so hard for me to sit here and be still. Oh, I can't work still. Okay. So I still want to start with a three minute business plan. And because we are doing at home version of this, uh, I need to, it, it's all weird, but that's okay. We like weird stuff. If you're watching this, you like weird stuff because, well, you're watching me and I'm pretty weird. So, <laughs> okay. So hopefully we can all see this. Uh, I know sharing out a screen sometimes, uh, is not does not work the first time, but uh, you should be seeing just a uh, from domain to profit and uh, the three minute business plan. And this is what we run through on our on our uh, three minute business plans. And I'm trying to pull it up on the live so that way. Hopefully, I can see it as well. 
Um, but if you see this, uh, if, if you do see the screen share, if you would go ahead and uh, give me a shout out on that. So that way I know, uh, I do not see it. So Dag Nabbit, um, come on, come on screen, share out, share out. Cause it's kind of important that this actually works. Nope. Nope. See, it should have been over there. It wasn't over there. Okay. Well, we'll keep uh, we'll keep trying this, and uh, hopefully, we'll get uh, the screen share to work. But what I've done is I actually, and I'm I have a screen right back here, so my eyes are probably going to go to that a little bit. Apologies for that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I I stole this is a, a a child's whiteboard. So there's a chalkboard on one side and a whiteboard on the other side. So I have that as my backup plan. So we're going to go with that. So with a three minute business plan. What we do is we uh, look at domains that are available this week, and we try to look at them from a development perspective. So what does it mean that they're available this week? It means that they are domains that somebody owned, and they, for whatever reason, let them expire, and their loss is our gain because now we get to uh, you know, buy them at auction potentially for the highest bidder. We win, and we get that domain. And some of them are good for development. So uh, let me read these off to you since you won't be able to see them on my screen. I'll, I'll try to share it out, but uh, we see how that's been going. So if you can see this, uh, you'll be able to see uh, these domains here. Okay. So we have uh, leasing2.com, horsetransporter.com. I love the horse domains because they go all the way back to the first show when we talked about a horse domain. We have mondaymaker.com, uh, productionshows.com, ubering.com, which uh, I probably won't be bringing up necessarily, but ubering.com is over on GoDaddy, and uh, it's a trademark domain, so I would recommend avoiding it, but what a great domain. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing Uber is going to end up with it, whether it's through lawyers or uh, not. So uh, we have currentauctions.com, ohiohistory.com, which isn't really for development as much as I'm in Ohio. I like Ohio stuff. So ohiohistory.com was of interest to me. And uh, internetcheck.com, buyexotic.com, riderlist.com, uh, customizedinsurance.com, autopaints.com, and cheapmotel.com. All of those are the domains that we have potentially to talk about for the purpose of, and you can, and Matt says, uh, you can see it now. So what the heck is up with that it technology? I don't get it, man. I don't, I don't understand how this stuff, uh, you know, you'd think a computer guy I've born and raised on these things. I'd be able to know what the heck I'm talking about. So I want to, uh, pick one of these. Uh, I want to keep it simple. Let's go with, um, let's go with productionshows.com. And we'll do this one. Uh, we'll do this one. Okay, production shows. So typically we would have a three-minute countdown and we would run through uh, talking about the business for this. So what we do in the three-minute business plan, my goodness, nine minutes into this, and we're just now getting to this. Apologies, I'm off my game. So what we do is we take a domain name. We talk about a problem for that domain name. We talk about the solution for the domain name. And then we build out a little bit of a business plan. What's the marketing for that domain look like? So maybe the unique selling proposition, the USP. Uh, we might also uh, talk about the authority, which the domain itself is typically what brings the authority. Uh, and authority is one of the two pieces of marketing that I talk about. Authority, which is the trustworthiness of something. And then the other piece is awareness. So awareness is where uh, advertising and word of mouth and how do you become aware of something? A and A, awareness and authority are the two pieces of marketing. And we don't always get to all of them, but hopefully you get the gist of it, especially over the course of weeks. So we're going to talk about productionshows.com. Productionshows.com. I'm going to click on this. And what this is going to pull up, one, it's going to set a tracking cookie for expireddomains.net who I use for my searching. This domain name expires or the auction is up in four days and 23 hours, currently $12 and there's no one uh, currently bidding on it. So you can be number one there. So it of course will go for more of that. Productionshows.com, 
Uh, so what I like to do is think about a domain name as far as who else would like to own it. One of the first problems we think about when we talk about a domain name, the first problem is only one person can own that domain name and how many other people would love to own productionshows.com. So one problem that we might overcome is whether how to share that domain name out with a lot of other people. Another thing we might look at is uh, something to do with the keywords that are specific to that domain name. So production shows, production shows, thinking Broadway, thinking, um, I mean, it could be web shows. It can be, I don't know, any anything and everything that's uh, maybe falls in the line of production shows. I think production typically is live, right? That's a live performance. Right. I'm going to go with that. So anything under that umbrella. Now, what we could do and what I can do is I'm going to go over to semrush.com. Semrush.com is one of the tools I mentioned on from domain to profit. And on semrush.com, uh, we, uh, we can type in some keywords and find out about this domain name, productionshows.com. So the domain name itself is probably not going to have like anything tied to it because this is not an SEO domain name. This is, uh, well, I assume it's not an SEO domain name. So we're probably going to find a bunch of zeros and a bunch of nothings here. Okay, load, load, load. Come on. I'm on the clock, even if I don't have a clock. Okay, so nothing's showing up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the domain name, remove the .com, which we typically deal only in .coms, you know, the premium, the .com, the main real estate of the internet. So productionshows.com, we have 110 exact searches for that keyword. That's what we see here when we do the keyword. Uh, we see some a bunch of different uh, questions. Sometimes we can use these questions and these keyword variations to kind of get an idea of how we can monetize the domain name. Questions, a production possibility curve shows, production possibility, what? Uh, okay, there's some niche stuff happening here that I am not 100% familiar with. Production function shows, production function shows. Okay, I'm not seeing a ton of different stuff. So in that case, whenever we have to deal with that, uh, we just make the crap up right? I, I think we just make it up. So I want to list out production shows. Uh, we're going to probably get a lot of amateur, maybe even some, I don't know, maybe stand-up comedians or something. But I'm thinking calendar, thinking categorize the different shows, allow the shows to post it. And uh, as we'll talk about a little bit, as we talk about value ladders, we'll talk about some of the different ways that we can help production shows uh, generate business and help them meet their goals, solve their problems. And once we do that, what we'll be able to do is monetize a couple of them. So maybe on the free side, we will let them list their date, their type of production show for free. And then on a paid version, maybe they get a customized profile. And uh, then maybe uh, down the road is almost getting ahead of myself here. What we might do is provide marketing services for production shows. So we are production shows, the main place you go for all things production shows, production shows and those who put them together, whether it's a directory of choreographers, music places, uh, my goodness, they have to get the trademarks and the rights to the different music and things, all kinds of stuff go into production shows and we can bring all that together in one place. Uh, it's just a matter of choosing that first entry point that allows us to make our money back and be worth a darn uh, to bring traffic in and stuff. So over three minutes, hopefully there's some good stuff in there. Hopefully you can see the route that we go at. And it's all based on that premium domain name, the authority of that domain name, which productionshows.com, uh, at least for 110 searches a month, it makes sense. Oh, let me check real quick. I'm going to check to see if the singular pulls up. Um, a lot of times it, it includes a singular, but let me, I'm just doing a quick search. Okay. So singular is the same amount of traffic. It's still 110. So I just wanted to look at that real quick just to see if that by chance pulled up something uh, significantly more. So well, there we go. Productionshows.com. And that's over on GoDaddy in, in, in what, four days, five days. So I uh, expect that to go for a few hundred to the low four figures is what I would guess. So 
I started to get into it a little bit there with production shows, but what I want to talk about today is something called value ladders. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, there's been two mentors in my life that have mentioned that. Uh, one is Darren Hardy. He talks about uh, in some of his business mastermind classes, he's talking about value ladders. But one of the guys that I know uh, that I've read his books, watched a lot of his videos, um, is Russell Bronson. Bronson? I, I never knew his name. Anyhow, <laughs> need to give him a check. But he has some great books that I highly recommend you check out if you're into marketing at all. Uh, at, what is it? Uh, Expert Secrets is one of them. Dot uh, com secrets. And these books are like so simple. You're going to read through them and think, yeah, I get all this. I understand all this. Uh, but another mentor of mine, Jim Rohn, he says, what's easy to do is also easy not to do. So when you get into those books, if you decide to get them, uh, don't let the simplicity of them lose track of how, how amazing the, 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 the steps and the knowledge in those books are. So maybe next week, uh, we'll talk about, um, I, I want to spend some time talking about like the, some of the books that I've read and depending on where you are in your business, personal development journey, uh, you might benefit from some of those books. Everything I have is self-discovered and by self-discovered, it's discovered from uh, books and all the different things that I've looked for. So value ladders is the idea of providing uh, solutions. Just like we talk about in our three minute business plan, we're looking to provide we identify problems under the umbrella of the topic that our domain name gives us, and then we want to provide solutions. So the way that Russell says uh, to do this, and I agree, this is a, a great tactic, is to come up with as many problems and solutions as you can come up with. And you're talking big picture solutions. So under the you know umbrella, in the doorway that is production shows, for example, or well, actually let me, um, let me see here. Let me come up with a couple of domains that, uh, people have mentioned. Um, so i last week I talked about streaming concerts a little bit, which was Vito's domain. Uh, if, if somebody has a domain name that they want me to mention, uh, I can maybe build out a value ladder. So if you hit me in the chat quick enough, I'll talk about your domain and talk about a value ladder and kind of put together some different things with it. Otherwise, I'm just going to dive into like a little bit of towing.com. So, and hopefully the sound, I hopefully I can pick this up a little bit. So, like I said, I stole my daughter's uh, whiteboard here. And uh, uh, so I'm going to try to use this. Whiteboards do not show up on video all that well, um, but hopefully we will go. We have Arizona Mortgage. I'd prefer not to do a geo domain name, but we could, we could go with that I, uh, option. I'll talk a little more generally. Let me see what we come up with on domains. So what we are looking at when we're looking at a value ladder is how can we bring, how do you bring value to any different, uh, any different customer or visitor to your site, you're going to bring value by solving their problems. How can you solve their problems? So you're going to be solving their problems. How can you, as some, you know, guy or gal, somebody that's just developing out a domain name or as simply as possible in many cases, or providing some service through your domain name, how can you bring value to that customer? So, that value comes from solving their problem. So you have their problem and you're coming up with a solution. So for example, uh, well, I'll, I'll try growers club. I don't, I don't a hundred percent, you know, I love talking just craziness. So we'll go with growersclub.com, Michael, uh, uh, you know, we'll go with this. So in growersclub.com. So I'm going to go B2B. So say that you are an independent grower, you're growing cannabis and, um, you are out to make money and growersclub.com, we will assume is a, a site that is kind of like a chamber of commerce or an organization for all the growers across the world to come together and uh, get different benefits of being in a community. Sounds good to me. They pay a, a monthly or an annual membership to be part of it. So 
the problems that those growers are going to have, uh, you know, they're going to probably need uh, legal advice. They're going to need uh, possibly contracts. They're going to need to be able to handle their cash or know which banks or payment institutions to work with. All of those different solutions can be gathered, you know, into a database, for example. Oh my goodness. Okay. Database. Okay. That's the uh, symbol for database. It's supposed to be a cylinder thing. So, uh, so the kind of the question, so you can have a resource database. So what you might do, uh, so what else do they need? Uh, they might need the actual services. So, So what services might a grower need? Uh, we mentioned legal. I'm going to say distribution. Also write down marketing. Uh, so they're going to need just a lot of different services uh, that are going to be pretty common business to business type services. So of course you're, well, Maybe you're not a lawyer. Maybe you are. Maybe you specialize in this and want to provide this to growers. Uh, maybe you just want to provide. So what you would do, how you would start the value ladder is you would take all the different problems and then talk about the different solutions that anyone can provide. All the different solutions, any and every different solution that's out there, all the different problems you just build out a big list and uh, I'm a big fan of post-it notes as well. And if I would, if you could actually see it, I would put it on post-it notes and just fire them off. Just every different thing, just do a brain dump of all the different problems and or solutions, get them up on the board. Now the thing, the way the a value ladder. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. So we have a squeaky chair and we have uh, the squeaky marker. So this is kind of like a value ladder. It's kind of more of like value steps, you know. So, uh, but here's the idea. Uh, the price is here. So if you were to put a uh, the X axis here, we might do price. And then you might call this value. And the idea is as they pay more, you're providing more value. So now what you do is you take all those different problems, all those different solutions that you could possibly provide, and you start to gather them together and you start to group them uh, by what you can do. So let's say that you wanted to have a free option on your site. You wanted uh, growers to be able to sign up and get some kind of value from growersclub.com for free. So what can you offer for free? Well, you can offer... Uh, information, right? There's no, there's no cost for information. You can get, you can take a, a play out of the playbook that I go with, which is uh, user generated content. You can get experts in the various fields to post uh, information, articles, blog posts to your website, and you can share those with your visitors and the growers for free maybe run a forum. Uh, if there was value in the domain name along the, the way of uh, email addresses or anything like that, you can possibly share those out. Although you'd want to pay, you, you'd want them to pay for that. So you might put some resources together for free. What other sources? So uh, up here, these members, or I'm sorry, these different service providers, for example, lawyers might pay to be marked as a um they specialize in dealing with the legal issues of cannabis growers and distributors and things. So if they want to identify, they might pay to be a resource for the, uh, for the free members. So hopefully this is making sense. So the free members, what we're actually doing is we're building a list. Probably heard that in marketing quite a bit. Uh, you want to build a list of people that, uh, have identified and qualified themselves as somebody in that industry. So if you get, you know, every grower out there to register for free to be able to get the free resources, now you have a list. And now places like 
uh, lawyers and marketing services and distributors or places that they can sell their goods, all those people are going to want to sell to your list. They're going to want to sell to your free members. Uh, this is the same model that uh, Peter Askew uh, mentions uh, that he does on his job boards uh, that I'm also going to do on our job board, which we'll talk about that possibly a little bit today. Uh, probably not today, but we'll talk about that at some point uh, using uh, different services as a way to generate more leads for higher value things. So you might make money off your free people. So what else could you do? You might provide a... Um, so in a chamber of commerce, for, for example, uh, you know, they might have a discount program or uh, aggregate uh, insurance or something like that. So you might have services. You might have group services that you can provide for your members. And now you are serving the growers. And if you're joining us, uh, see Vito popping in. Uh, so what we're talking about is a value ladder and we've grouped all of our problems and solutions. And now uh, we're talking about, so this might be, say we're coming up with like a $50 membership for growersclub.com. Uh, and what we're putting together is problems for, or sorry, solutions for the problems that growers might have in an escalating way where they can have a free membership, which they get access to the different resources of the website. They register, give us their email address. Uh, then they might pay us a $50 a month annual fee. And for that, they, uh, they might get a listing on the website, a basic listing. And that basic listing allows that grower to be contacted by those who need growers, I don't know if that's a thing or not, but maybe. So they get a little basic exposure for 50 bucks a year. Uh, they get access to some of the services that are offered to the group. Uh, and you might be able to provide different solutions for the growers here. And then maybe you have a $500 a year. And then you have a $3,000 a year option. So what you'll find is the more value you provide, Along your y-axis down here, the more value you provide, the more you can charge. And that's what we're trying to put together here. And what you're going to end up with is steps or your value ladder. So uh, for 500 bucks, we do things that we could do for everybody without individualized attention. Okay, this is, it has to be all automated, all systemized. This is where we spend a lot of time, for example, uh, let me go in and I'll talk about uh, some of what we do on towers. Uh, I'm sorry, towing.com. And I just dropped my pin cap. So like, for example, on towing.com, uh, anyone can sign up to join our mailing list. And we're going to be building out more and more free options for the sake of getting their contact information, which benefits us. And now we can have other people sell to our list then they can pay us a small annual fee to uh, get some very basic features. So they'll have uh, a little bit, they'll get a little exposure through the website. Uh, they're always on the bottom, but they get some exposure. You could find their company. They'll have a basic profile. Next, they'll step up to a featured listing, which now they get, uh, they get a towing.com email forward. They get a subdomain on towing.com. They get a customizable profile that can act like a web page. They get, uh, they get a featured listing whenever anybody searches for their company. They get all kinds of different features. So we're solving a lot of the problems that they might be dealing with as a towing company trying to market themselves. And we're, again, we're doing that in that you know, $500 to $1,000 a year range. Now, what can we do beyond that? You know, we have tower, towing companies that might be looking for, uh, they're looking for to grow their companies, right? So in that case, we'll take, sorry, I switched it from growers to towing. Just uh, hopefully I got a little bit into growers club to kind of see how you might apply it to a domain name. Uh, but now I'm kind of getting in my wheelhouse. Hope that's okay. <laughs> so how could, how could we help towing companies grow their companies, but much more on a custom basis? Not everyone's going to pay us maybe $3,000 a month, but we can certainly do things that are worth $3,000 a month. For example, 
Uh, I can put together a marketing campaign for them. I could set up Facebook ads. I can do custom stuff for that company that will take up my time or someone's time to customize and work specifically for that company. Next thing you know, because you're spending a lot more time providing a much bigger result for that customer, providing them more value. Now you're of course going to be charging more because it's worth more. Hopefully that makes sense. So all a value ladder is, is more is the various solutions you can provide. And if there's no cost to you provide them, for example, you know, mailing lists or just setting up a way for others to contact, th those are all free things. You can do those for free. There's no cost to you. And as you start to do more work to pull together systems and customizable, uh, you know, maybe to upload a logo or something like that, that's going to cost you a little money. Now you can start to charge a little bit for it. But then as you start to really help them solve their problem of maybe growing their company or, uh, you know, reaching more people or ranking higher on Google, some of the things that we do on Tony.com, those things require more advanced systems. So we're going to charge them more per month, per year. And currently right now we don't provide any custom services, but if we did, if we are solving their problem in a custom way, we could even charge more and, uh, and help them with their marketing more on a custom basis. So that's, that's basically a value ladder and the, the gist of it. So, Hopefully that makes sense. And as I mentioned, uh, Russell is uh, Russell Bronson. Bronson. I, I'd have to Google. It. I feel bad about getting the guy's name wrong. Uh, but expertsecrets.com is uh, his is a website, but it's a book. It's a book. Really good book. Uh, pretty cheap. Uh, he he uses it to sell a product, uh, ClickFunnels, which I'm not a big fan of ClickFunnels. Uh, it's similar to like an active campaign or. Um, HubSpot or some of those CRM, uh, customer relationship management software. Uh, so, uh, you know, but anyhow, he gives great information, great books, and they're pretty cheap. He's going to, and you'll also see some really good advertising because he spends a lot on advertising. So, oh yeah. So there we go. There's a little bit about value ladders. So as we talk about three minute business plans in the future, what you'll start to see is some of the solutions that we provide and can develop for a domain name might fall on the cheap side of the domain name and some might fall on the more expensive side. In fact, one way to see a value ladder is to view a pricing chart. Let me uh, let me uh, pull up and share a screen here real quick. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for uh, SEM rush pricing. Let's see if they have this. Uh, so what I'm trying to do, of course, I Google everything. Everybody Googles everything. Even if you're looking on somebody's website, it's easier than, of course, ugh, come on, seriously. You look for SEM rush pricing and somehow you, the number one result is what the heck just happened there? What the heck just happened? Anyhow, that was some hacky stuff. I'm not sure what I just did there. Okay. So what, what I'm pulling off here and what I'm trying to show you is, so SEM Rush, this is essentially a value ladder. Whenever you see these pricing charts where they have like a cheap or a free option, then they have different payment structures, you know, per month. That basically what they've done is they've built out a value ladder. So uh, they provide you this much value and these many solutions for this price. And then you can, of course, get more and more solutions and you know features for this price. And then, of course, there's even a more expensive one with even more and more problems and solutions. Uh, everything you need, all for $3.99. And then look at this, custom solutions. They have even a higher on that value ladder, they have custom solutions that I'm sure you could pay them thousands and thousands of dollars to do something custom for you. That is a value ladder uh, just right in a pricing chart. So anytime you see that pricing chart, one, two, three, or anything like that, you're essentially seeing somebody build out a value ladder. So let me go. Uh, Peter's not on here, but I'm going to just dive right into cooljobs.com. And I'll show you the value ladder that Peter pulled off for his um, 
for his website, cooljobs.com. So what you'll see here, and I'm going to zoom out because I, okay. So I zoomed out a little bit. Hopefully you see this. So what he did was uh, he, he has these pricing charts. And, you know, I don't even know if Peter under like sees this as a value ladder, but that's essentially what he's done is, you know, he has a free one. Sure, we'll help you solve your problem of hiring and posting your cool job, but we'll do it for free. And uh, but realistically, look at this. Uh, it's not going to be live for over a week uh, and it's only going to be up there for a couple of weeks. Why does it take so long? Because for free you don't get much of our time. You don't get our attention to, we're not going to react to your stuff really quickly because it's free, but we give you a free option. But what this does is allow you to build your list and do some things. Uh, for example, over here, you'll see here for silver, it's included in the monthly jobs e-letter. So who shows up in that e-letter? Well, you better darn well believe every single free one gets that e-letter. Okay. So now he has a better newsletter to bring more value to the other people that are paying. And then you see the other features. This is all a value ladder. It may be side to side, but realistically, each time you have an increase in price, you have an increase in value, which is what we're trying to do. So anytime you see a pricing chart, uh, just know that essentially what you're dealing with is a value ladder. So uh, I've what I've started actually doing uh, our business is I've been essentially writing out uh, these pricing charts and product comparisons, pricing comparisons. I've been writing them out as we start to talk about uh, adding a new service or adding a new account type or anything like that. Um, you know, how are we solving our customers' problems? Well, how can we categorize it and provide a different thing? And I, I've been drawing out these price charts for our different services. So let me try to think of, um, so for example, we are launching, uh, We I bought uh, mechanicjobs.com. I think it's third week in a row I mentioned that. Bought mechanicjobs.com from, uh, from Peter. And the reason why we bought that is because we are also redoing and I'll just pull this up, uh, not entirely for selfish. Uh, so on towing.com jobs, we've always, we, years back, we added a, a job search. So basically towing companies can post, uh, they can post their jobs, you know, so our featured members, people that pay us to be a monthly member, they pay, and now that part of that membership, they can post their jobs and they show up here in our job search. Well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to add more to our value ladder. And, you know, our feature members do it, but what if somebody wants to post a job for free? Or what if we wanted to allow non featured members to pay to post a job? So, what I did was I wrote out and pretty much went to this here. Let me turn off this screen. So I started with the value ladder and I said, okay, for free. And sorry, I got some glare. Uh. <laughs> okay, this is about to go haywire, but I'll try not. To. Okay, so what do we do with, uh, so what can we do for our free members? And then say somebody paid us uh, to post a job and they wanted to pay us 10 bucks or 20 bucks. What are we willing, what can we do for them? And then maybe a twenty-five or a forty-dollar job listing. What would, what could we do to earn that money and solve their problems? You know, helping them find good candidates and stuff like that. So we pulled together a value, uh, a value ladder with uh, some different pricing tools or some a different pricing comparison. And essentially, uh, Matt is working on Matt back in my office. One of my programmers. Uh, he's been working on pulling out this, you know, if you look at what this looked like just last a uh, couple weeks ago, you'll see it looks completely different. So what we're trying to do is increase the value that we're providing. So now towing companies and different people that might want to hire, uh, you know, drivers, dispatchers, uh, towing related and mechanic related jobs, they can post to towing.com. And as part of an upgrade for our value ladder, uh, maybe the featured job posting also will post that job on mechanicjobs.com. It's included in that featured listing. We're providing more value. We're providing. So anyhow, hopefully you kind of see how that goes. 
uh, good stuff. Hopefully you find that uh, of value. And as you pull out your, uh, your various uh, domain names, trying to figure out how you can bring value, there's always different ways you can provide value, whether it's, you know, free, what can you do for anyone and everyone? Uh, and then as you increase value, increase the amount of work you have to do, well, the price is going to go up because hopefully you're solving more problems and so on until all the way to where you're doing custom work for somebody, which most of us on the passive basis, like I want passive income. We don't really do custom work uh, for that reason. Okay. Let's do another three minute business plan. So a three minute business plan is where we talk about a domain name that is available this week. And we talk about how we might develop that domain name out. And these domain names are all available. And I believe I had some that were over on uh, other domains, but I don't see them showing up here. So last we talked about productionshows.com, um, current auctions, internet check, buy exotic. I don't know how this is going to go, but let's try riderless. I really like this domain name. It's very brandable, but at the same time, ah, uh, and that's what we get. That's why we check. Okay. So riderless.com is not available. That would have been a great domain name. Uh, customized insurance. Let's try that one. And what happens is in cases like that, the person that did own it ended up renewing it before it got to uh, like the drop dead time of that auction. So customizedinsurance.com, customizedinsurance.com. Uh, so I'm just going to, we don't have a three minute clock like usual, but uh, we'll kind of just do a little bit of a three minute business plan on this. And basically in three minutes or less, we'll try to talk about uh, ways that we can turn this domain name into a business. So customizedinsurance.com, you can see the keyword that is associated with it. And I'm going to go over to SM, SEM Rush as I talk about it. So the domain name is customizedinsurance.com. Uh, the keyword kind of decides anyone that might search for customizedinsurance.com. I'm sorry, customized insurance. They would believe, as you might believe, if you're looking for customized insurance, customizedinsurance.com like has to be the authority of that, right? They have to be trustworthy. They have to know something about it. Why else would they have a website up on customizedinsurance.com if it wasn't to help customize insurance? I don't know. Makes sense to me. That's kind of what we're going for. That's the authority piece of a domain name. Just like towing, you go to towing.com because you expect to find towing related products and services from towing companies. Voila, you do. Uh, the same thing happens with these other domains. Customized insurance, I would expect to find, or what I would like to find as a visitor going to the site, I would want to see ways that I can pick and choose various pieces of insurance that I'm looking for and then see uh, providers of that insurance. I don't care to provide insurance, but what I could do is say, for example, you're looking for, let's go with auto insurance. And you'll see here, I just pulled up SEM Rush, 140 exact searches, um, progressive insurance, Geico insurance, farmers. These are people looking for specific stuff, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, customers. And let me just see what custom, custom insurance. So what I would do is uh, essentially try to, most people are just like, hey, you know, I need car insurance and they get car insurance, a uh, car insurance quotes based on your location, the value of your vehicle. But what if you want to like add in different features? No insurance company that I'm aware of does that. Well, maybe on customizedinsurance.com, visitors can come in and say, hey, I want, um, roadside assistance included with my insurance. I want rental car reimbursement. And you can select the different features of your insurance that you might want. And then it shows you the different insurance providers that might or do provide that. If you can get an API uh, or some kind of interface to allow you to provide a price, that would be freaking awesome. If not, you can just show the companies that provide that level of service with the different customized features you allowed them to select. And then you can kind of weed them down to like the top two or something and then allow them to click through to go to that insurance company's website to get a specific quote. 
You could do it like a lead program. Basically, that's what that would be. Uh, insurance companies pay pretty good lead prices. Uh, so that'd be one good option. Um, you can also, if you, you know, I'm assuming nobody here is wanting to start an insurance company. I'm not 100% sure why you would. But if you were an insurance company, you could do this as a way to uh, allow your customers to ch pick and choose the different levels of insurance and then provide them a custom quote. I think there's a lot that you could probably do with a customizedinsurance.com. Uh, but of course, most insurance companies are in the stone ages. So I don't know. So anyhow, there you go. Customizedinsurance.com. Problem is... Uh, how do you find out which serve, which companies provide specific services and or their pricing? Well, customizeinsurance.com is where you can go to enter, uh, enter the different custom aspects of insurance that you're looking for. And then we will show you the insurance companies that will do for that for auto, uh, for life, and what other insurance stuff that's out there. There you go, customizeinsurance.com. Uh, and how would we monetize it? Probably through uh, through leads. I think leads are going to be the way because insurance companies are typically too big to pay you like a monthly fee to, to be on your site. But you possibly could find some uh, people willing to feature or be a, um, like an advertiser or something. So there you go, customizeinsurance.com. There you go. Let's do another three-minute business plan. I like these. Uh, I, I love pulling up business plans. Let's try to come up with a... Um, so we have horsetransporter.com. Let me share out these domains again. So that way you can see the domains that I have pulled aside. So all these domains, uh, nearly all of them are available over on uh, GoDaddy Auctions, um, except for Rider List. That one's gone. BuyExotic.com. That's good for if you're like, you know, exotic cars come to mind. Um, not really my thing, but uh, you could do that. Let's try to put it in the context of a value ladder. So which of these domain names will have a problem that we can solve in many different ways? Let's see. I, I like cheap motels, but I don't see that one being one. Monday Maker, Monday Maker. Let's see if that one's available. If it's still available at auction. Uh, oh, yeah. MondayMaker.com. So here's what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, and that one, six days left. So that's uh, what Friday or Saturday, MondayMaker.com is going to be uh, going up for auction, $12 currently. I imagine this one's going to stay pretty cheap because it's more of a brandable domain name. I like it. I put it up here mostly because I was thinking like Monday Maker is a, uh, a little bit of a personal development type thing. You're, you know, you got to plan out your week. And how do you plan it out? Well, it all starts with Monday. It all starts with that day one. So mondaymaker.com is where you go uh, to make your Monday, to make your week, to make your life. There you go. Something like that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so uh, mondaymaker.com uh, under the umbrella of uh, personal development. So we'll try to do pretty much what we've talked about doing up to this point. So the problems uh, is, so what we're trying to do is find out how to start our week off right. We're looking to just crush it on Monday to make our Monday because we know if we make our Monday, we can make our week, make our month, make our quarter, make our year, make our life. Boom. I like that. I like that kind of flow to it. It has some, makes some sense, falls under our domain name. So the problem we're looking at is, uh, planning uh, prioritizing uh, and I'll probably spell all kinds of stuff wrong here so I hope that's okay entertainment I'm a comedian like that animal horrible speller so uh, we're looking for uh, the problems that we're dealing with the solutions are going to be in the under the umbrella of planning and in salute and, salu and uh, prioritizing so you could put mondaymaker.com as a to-do list. It's a weekly to-do list that you put together to make your Monday. And essentially, it is a to-do list uh, where you have your item and you can, you can drag those items 
and prioritize them. This could be like either your free option or really cheap option for mondaymaker.com. And the idea is, and here's why it's Monday Maker, is uh, you pretty much can like show them the top priority. And then uh, once they complete that, they can see the next one and the next one and the next one. And then it automatically carries over anything you didn't get done to next Monday and or something like that. Uh, so we would have, hopefully you can see this, the free option might be a uh, maybe just some worksheets and some resources to planning your week. Uh, that would be the free. So these are going to be your, uh, so you might put together some worksheets, some web trainings. These are going to be things that are essentially free giveaways that are for the sake of uh, probably getting people into your funnel, onto your list. But you can do those things for free. And then you're going to start to, now that you've provided some basic resources, basic solutions for their problems, some of those trainings, now you can really help them take that to the next level and provide them some tools. Uh, so you might do a to-do list, um, like a log. So what I'm talking about here, oh, let me, uh, so you can actually see what I'm writing here. So we're talking, and I'm sorry about this glare. I can't do much about it here, uh, but we have the tools. Uh, so for here, you might do, I don't know, $99 a year or something. These are going to be tools that you would literally develop out for an annual basis or maybe even an app. Uh, and this would be a to-do list a log of different activities, uh, maybe a time tracker or something like that. Your goal tracker, what are you, What are the things that you're trying to accomplish in your business? And then mondaymaker.com is all geared towards making sure you start your Mondays with the number one priority on top. If you can accomplish that, I mean, just think about it in your own life. If you can put together a website that helps people uh, be able to start their weeks off and actually get into the office and create, you know, know what they should be doing and then actually do it. Uh, certainly a problem worth solving and something that people would be willing to pay for. So uh, there you go. So uh, so that might be how we develop out the business ladder. And then you can also, you know, down the road, if people really love the product solutions you're creating, you can provide uh, custom coaching and things like that. I don't, there you go. There's uh, what, six minute business plan or something like that for mondaymaker.com. So this domain name uh, specifically, nobody's going to be searching probably for mondaymaker.com. It's more of a, what is called a brandable domain name. And uh, so it's not keyword. I like those generic keywords where it's actually keywords that people are typing into Google. So that might be Monday planner, might get some key searches, uh, planningmyweek.com. Those kinds of domain names would be my priority. But if you're looking to have a brand that makes sense, this could be a good domain name for that. So there's another three-minute business plan. And let me see here. Matt is asking. I'm just going to put this up here without reading it until it's live. What would be a good idea to use that name to go against Monday.com? Because isn't that exactly what they do? Ah, uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, Monday.com is definitely a planning uh, solution. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar. They're super elaborate. So... They certainly cannot trademark. I mean, Monday's a generic. Anyhow, you you might have to look at trademark issues, possibly because it has Monday in it. Uh, may have to avoid some of their tools because you don't want to try to piggyback their brand. But for the most part, I don't. So I, I guess I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it's not. You know, I certainly wouldn't want to do something as as a domain developer. If you and I. If those watching this were to buy Monday Maker, chances are you're trying to do it as simple as possible to create a passive version of income. Uh, so you're probably not going to go as elaborate as creating a whole nother Monday.com, which is, I believe, a giant suite of tools that help you organize and run an entire business. This is more about just focusing on having your Monday start off perfect. 
so you can prioritize your uh, week. So I, I'm guessing there's uh, room enough there for anyone. Uh, so there you go. Hopefully that answers that a little bit. So let me see. Value ladder. So the value ladder uh, is, uh, you know, using, we've talked about the value ladders, the idea of uh, we can charge more for bringing more value and bringing more value means solving their problems in a more and more custom way or a more and more, why am I saying more and more? Okay. <laughs> in a way that uh, solves it more specifically for them or possibly brings them more revenue or whatever it is. A value ladder is X axis, Y axis, and brain disappearing on that one. So, oh, let me check in on trackingprograms.com, tell you a little bit about what we're doing with that. So, the last uh, three or four weeks, uh, we've been slowly building out trackingprograms.com. Part of what I was thinking about doing today was uh, showing you, well, I'll just show you. Let me just do this real quick. I know we're running short on time. So our update on trackingprograms.com is this right here. Uh, we are, what I've done is I've went in and added Google Tag Manager to our uh, tracking programs. So, uh, and I'm not sure what's going on here. So what I'm going to show you, I, I find Google Tag Manager, Google Tag Manager. I find it by Googling Google Tag Manager every time. Then I go into it and... Um, what I'm going to do is show you, and then I sign into my tag manager, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to show you anything you can't just find in the source of our websites, which is good. And whenever this loads. So what I've done is I've added the Google Tag Manager to our website using this one here. It's just waiting list. So this Google Tag will be something I can add to all of our websites uh, that we may put together for waiting lists. So if you were creating a Google tag, uh, you would come into Google Tag Manager. It's just really simple process. My goodness, I am clicking the wrong things and taking forever. You would create an account. This is what you would essentially do. Okay, so I typed uh, waiting list here, typed waiting list here, selected a website because that's what we're creating it for. And once I did that, that created... I am not sure. Okay. Let me select it. So that created this page here, which does not look like anything for you. I get that. But what it does is Google Tag Manager allows you to put some basic code on your website that will allow you to... Uh, it will allow you to install other tracking services without going into the source of your, your website. So here's the code that it prompts you to install. And basically you have to paste, copy and paste this code into the top of your page. So over on lead pages, I went to trackingprograms.com under settings. And currently I'm using leadpages.com uh, for managing our lead page. You can use anything else, but it'll be pretty much the same process. Under settings, analytics, I pasted the Google tag that it generated into the head section. And then it also gives you one to paste this in the body section. So I did that, saved it, updated. That is now on our uh, trackingprograms.com that we're going to be, you know, hopefully making some money as uh, from over at some point as we develop that out because we're doing this kind of live. And then what I did was I created a new tag, which I the tag that I created was one for Google Analytics. And basically, here's how Tag Manager works. In a nutshell, I grabbed my UA code. So that is, let me, uh, uh, it's not going to let me see it. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to show it. So I grabbed my UA code, which is the Google Analytics universal analytics tracking code. I created a variable and posted it in here. Basically, I posted, pasted it in here, uh, selected Google Analytics. I'm just going to do this again. Hope it's okay that I'm taking the time to do this. So test, 
uh, and I'm just saying this one's Google. And then I tap the configure. I, and this is all it is. You select the Google Universal Analytics or whatever it is to kind of tracking you want to do. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. And then you can create a new variable. And Google has the code, the tracking ID is something. It's going to look like something like UA and then a bunch of numbers, something like that. You'll get that from your Google Analytics. I pasted it in there. I saved it. And when I did that, it basically allowed me to then go down here to triggering. There's two sections to a tag. There's what you're tracking, and then there's how you want to track it. Then under triggering, I selected all pages. So that means that on that lead, on the trackingprograms.com, every time a page is loaded, it's going to fire off on all pages this tag that we've created here. So every time somebody goes to the page, it's going to track through Google Analytics and we can add all kinds of other tags. For example, our Facebook pixel, we can add that to that page and uh, different things like that, which I've not done yet. Then you submit it and that's it. It's up there. I know that's a really quick, probably not very helpful explanation of it, but that's Google Tag Manager and it allows you to not so if you're not a programmer, or even if you are, and you don't want to get into the code every freaking time you need the, you want to add a tracking or make a change to the JavaScript on your page, use Google Tag Manager. And then all you have to do is go into Google Tag Manager, make the change, and it automatically changes your web page without you needing to go and uh, access the code and upload it and update it and all that stuff. So simple, simple way of doing that stuff. So what would you use it for? Google, adding your Google Analytics tag, your Facebook pixel, which is what allows you to track for marketing. We would also use it for our active campaign tracking JavaScript, uh, which tracks when people click through our emails to that. Uh, so, okay, hopefully that's helpful. That's a lot of content, a lot of stuff uh, that I hope that if you're developing out a site, you'll get some good stuff. Uh, if nothing else, the one thing that I think you can pull away from today that I know I pull away because I'm actually doing it frequently in my own business is creating out a pricing comparison chart, which when you're doing that, you're essentially creating a value ladder, which is that uh, idea of, you know, they're going to pay more, the more value you can create for them. So that does it for another week of from domain to profit where we take domain names and talk about turning them into businesses. And next week I'll be back in the office to uh, have all my standing, my standing desk and uh, be able to have the sky cam. All the, I can't wait to push all the buttons. I'm just going to be pushing buttons like crazy. So thanks for joining me and I will see you next week on from domain to profit. Take care.